As you know, I take my job as a makeup reviewer very seriously. I take my speed makeup review videos very seriously. If I am putting a review out there, I take it serious. So today is just one of those days where I'm playing with a whole bunch of new products and products that I'm testing for my reviews and I thought I'd film it on camera and you can kind of see my process, all of that good stuff. Before we get into that though, I want to thank today's sponsor for the video which is going to be Florisys. You guys have probably heard me talk about them before. I use their eyebrow pencil quite frequently. It's become my holy grail and you guys are actually the reason that I even tried Florisys in the first place. I had so many of you tell me that I was going to love the makeup because you guys know I'm a big packaging, presentation kind of person and that is where Florisys definitely thrives in the market. So it's always really exciting that I get to work with them because in a way you guys are what introduced this relationship. So I have a few new products to try from Florists today. I think I'm going to play with this floral engraving O'Day makeup palette in the encounter. I've been eyeing this ever since I first found the brand so I'm really excited to play with that. They also did send though this floral engraving butterfly makeup palette. Looks really beautiful as well but I'm eyeing the first palette and then they also sent their Blooming Rouge Long Lasting Liquid Lipsticks so we'll be playing with those as well and then a lot of other makeup that I'm just testing for you guys in general so let's get into it. Starting off with some skin prep here, I have been testing the Refer Hydration Cream. Actually, let me zoom us in close. A true look at what we are working with. So this is what the moisturizer is going to come in. I think I've used it in a couple videos by now, but you know how skincare, I have to test it for a long time and I've really been enjoying this moisturizer. I even recommended it to one of my best friends. She asked me for a moisturizer, she didn't want to spend too much money and I was like, girl, I sent her the link to Refer. I was like, this brand is having a really good promotion now. If you don't know, they are having a promotion. You basically pay what you want for the moisturizer. You can get it for as low as zero dollars. Or you, my friend, she decided to pay like six dollars for it. Anyways, I really like it pre-makeup. I think it sinks into the skin really nice and quickly. It's fragrance-free, essential oil-free. And for me, I wouldn't use this like as a night moisturizer. My dry skin personally requires something a little bit more heavy but in terms of daytime moisturizer or something before makeup that's going to soak in really fast this is awesome I've been loving this I can't wait to give my final thoughts in my speed review about this but it's gonna be pretty positive okay this is a product that I have not tested yet I've been wanting to test it this is a mixture of products that I've been testing slash been wanting to test and these are quite trendy right now these are the Maybelline perfector four-in-one glow makeup people are saying on TikTok at least this is a Charlotte Tilbury flawless filter dupe. Some people are using it as foundation. So I think I'm gonna try the shade light to see. I haven't even opened this. So I guess we just turn it, what the heck, until product comes out. Normally for a product like this though, you can just rip the sponge off, which you can with this. So if you don't like the sponge aspect, totally do that. Ma'am, gonna be a while before we get some product out apparently. So if I were using this on my makeup clients, I would totally rub the sponge off because that would keep everything more sanitary. But let's try it first to be used as intended, but pull the sponge off if you're not a fan of that. Okay, let's see. This is a good color for me. Should I put it all over? I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury new foundation today, even though I've decided I don't like it, but I'm trying to make myself like it. Oh, that does give like a little bit of coverage. I'm gonna use a Refer 31 brush and let's push it in. I can see what people mean like it really is like the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. So this is the base that it gave. Very very glowy. For me personally who struggles with like pores and discoloration and all of that this could not work alone as a foundation because my pores look terrible right now but honestly as that initial layer right here it is super duper pretty. I actually want to keep Fairlight around because I might be able to pull that off as a liquid highlight. That looks really pretty for a glowing base definitely gonna have to play with this a little bit more but huh very interesting I told you guys I don't really like this foundation I've told you on multiple occasions but trying to find the best way for it to work for me probably wasn't the best idea to use this base underneath but we're gonna 
keeps playing. It's not that serious. I have the shade 4 Neutral, which you, if you are around my skin tone, this is like the perfect shade for me. I don't like this because I feel like it just sits heavy on the skin and it looks heavy as well. So I'm trying a less is more approach today. That probably was more than less. I feel like my skin's gonna be super glowy today. We'll see. With this foundation, it is true for my skin at least somebody with like pores and discoloration. This foundation looks a lot better if you apply a lot less. I find that the girls with perfect poreless skin really enjoy this foundation. That's not just what I have, you know? I have real skin issues and that's okay. And I honestly think with the base that the Maybelline gave that had just a little bit of coverage that is also helping me need less product. While the Maybelline didn't have that much coverage, it really assisted with this Charlotte Tilbury product so that I need less. Now my skin is very glowy right now. I'm gonna have to do some work with my concealer to kind of tone everything down a little bit. But as I look at my skin right now, it looks super dry. <laughs> The uh, glowiness is definitely highlighting like this right here. Maybe I don't like this product, but I definitely don't like these two together. It's mostly the foundation, I would say. Probably knew better than to pair these two together, but this is a lot. It's okay, we're gonna fix it, uh, but I'm not loving the way my skin looks right now, so. Before I get into concealer, I do want to quickly do my eyebrows. I'm going to use my Floresis eyebrow pencil. I've had this for a couple months now. I literally use it all the time. It's my go-to eyebrow pencil. It just deposits the right amount of color, you know? It's not too creamy to where it overblends and makes the eyebrows look less defined, but it's not too waxy to where you can't blend it out. It really is perfect. It doesn't give off too much color. It doesn't give off too little color. There's a reason I've been using this in 90% of my looks lately. Okay, I'm gonna finish this real quick and I'll be right back. So I've been trying to get in the habit of doing my makeup in this order. I've been preferring to do my concealer after my eyeshadow. So I like having the basic base with the foundation of my eyebrows being done. And then I do eyeshadow and that way I can clean it up with the concealer and a makeup wipe. It's been working out a lot for me. So eyeshadows are next, which this is the part that I'm always the most excited excited about, especially since the options that we have. Like I said, Florisys sent me a couple different options. Now, if you haven't heard of Florisys before, they're a fast-growing makeup brand that is based in the West Lake of China. Their goal is actually to create the most innovative and aesthetic cosmetics, which Honestly, they really, really, they do a good job of that. They create healthy and nourishing cosmetic products that actually contain herbal extracts and a lot of other caring ingredients, which I love as well. The overall brand is just trying to inspire global users with traditional beauty rituals with the Eastern aesthetics philosophy and modern technology. You know, the name Florsis is two words, flora, which is flower, which is about the ingredients that they put into their products, and then sis is sister. And their instant Inspiration has a lot of meaning, everything about the brand. Even their logo, it's a small window porch, which is an inspiration from the Asian porch window in Southern China, like classical garden designs. Really, really neat. Lots of information that you can find about the brand online if you're nerdy like that, like me. I, I find their website super interesting. So let me show you the actual palettes that I'm debating between. So this is the first one. This is the Floral Engraving Butterfly Makeup Palette. And here is what the packaging looks like, isn't it? beautiful and then you open it up and here is what it looks like see that I never touch these before I use them on camera because I just want you to look at how pretty they are the design inspiration is inspired by the Mao silver jewelry and butterfly patterns that are typical in the art of the Mao people. So this is a nod to that culture. And as you can see, the engraving here really is art. Like look at how detailed that is. So this has both matte and shimmer textures and you can use this for eyeshadow, highlighter, blush, all of that. Like these two would be beautiful for blushes. You can use the center as a highlight. So that's really beautiful. But I'm gonna use the palette that I actually have been eyeing ever since I discovered the brand and you'll see why. <laughs> Look at this you guys. This is the Floral Engraving O'Day Makeup Palette inspired by the Kauzi's Masterpiece. I'm gonna say this wrong but it's Lao Shen Fu. I will write that down <laughs> so you can see and the love story is told by the embossing on the palette. So look. Is this not one of the most beautiful palettes ever? 
So this is an ode to the nymph of the Luau Revert. I'm mispronouncing all of this. And it tells a story of his encounter with a nymph of the Lao River at the edge of the river. The nymph of the river is so beautiful and elegant and they fall in love with each other. However, human beings and the gods can't be together forever. So there is a miserable ending of their story. Cao Zi expressed his painful feelings through this poem. So wow, a lot of story behind this one but you can see how beautiful the palette is. <laughs> the colors here are so pretty and soft and romantic. It's multifunctioning as well. It can be used as eyeshadow, blush, and highlight. Once again, also an art piece. Let's use this one. So I'm gonna do one eye off camera and I will be back. So for eyeshadow, I definitely wanted to do something that could be simple and monochromatic. It's not Valentine's Day, the, the day that you guys are watching this, but I'm filming it on Valentine's Day. So I was feeling the warm toned look today which is out of my uh, usual preferences but I'm feeling the occasion so I'm gonna start off with this shade right here which I think would be such a pretty nude blush now you'll find that oh especially these like more reddish shades they aren't super pigmented but that's because they are supposed to be multifunctional for blush as well and you can build them up if you need to and then the shades that are supposed to be pigmented are quite pigmented very good very easy to use I do enjoy the quality of Floris's eyeshadows. I find them all super duper easy to use. Definitely a good formula for beginners because their formulas aren't too powdery. They don't get too messy or anything and they're buildable but they don't give you too much at the start which is nice. And you know with the Asian brands I don't expect too much pigment because that's just not the style of makeup over there. But I actually am surprised that Floris's puts the pigment that they do. Their quality is definitely more pigmented than a lot of other Asian brands. I'm gonna build up the depth. So I'm gonna start off with this shade right here. It hurts to touch the embossments, let me tell you, but it must be done. So you see how that gives pretty decent pigment, but it definitely is a formula that you can sheer out to use on the face as well. I'm just plopping that in the outer corner and then I am blending that inwards like so. You can see they're blending quite easily. I know it looks messy over here. That is why we do our concealer last. And then I'm really excited about this like raspberry deep shade. I'm going to go ahead and use this in the outer, outer corner. This actually almost makes the look more Valentine's-y because it is more raspberry. So this is what I was like, yes, I need this for Valentine's Day. I'm really excited about this. And I ha didn't do this on the other eye. But I want to use this dark brown right here. Just going to use it in the outer corner. And you see how that added just a little pop of depth. I'm glad I decided to, to do that. I wanted more depth. So my eye was drawn to one shade in this palette that I definitely had to use. And it's this shade right here. It's a pink with a strong gold shift. I want you to see it on my finger. Now the pink doesn't show through that much. It actually is more of a gold shade when you spread it out on the lid. But let me show you how pretty is that. So this actually gives a lot of shimmer to the eyelid if you like shimmer. And I feel like this would layer very pretty if you put the red over the eyelid as well. That would be stunning. But I just wanted to show you how it looked on its own. Very gorgeous. And I'm going to blend out my outer corners. Isn't this gonna be so pretty for Valentine's Day, even though Valentine's Day is over? I'm taking a pencil brush and I'm using this golden shade right here to highlight. That's going right here. That's pretty, that just like lifted the eye up. For concealer, I'm gonna be using the KVD Good Apple Concealer. I think I don't like this. I've been using it all week and it just is not as good as I was hoping for it to be. I just find that it really does sink into the fine lines of my under eyes and ages me. So yeah, I'm not as into it. I'm still testing it out with like different foundations, different powders just to optimize the wear with it. But yeah, I wouldn't really recommend this concealer. There's a lot more concealers that I'd recommend. I'm pretty picky when it comes to concealers. So this one to me is not as good as the foundation foundation itself, but I do like the coverage on it. I will give it that. It's like a medium to full, not quite full, but definitely more medium full. So I like the way it when it looks upon initial application, but I don't love the way that it wears on my 
under eyes. I'm gonna put it right here because remember how I didn't like how my base was looking? A lot of my texture and pores were really shining through. So I wanted to put something that's going to tone that down over top. So this is gonna help. See, now my skin looks a lot smoother. So that's a little tip for you. If this area ever just looks really textured or porous, get a good concealer, something a little bit more matte that will help kind of minimize the texture showing there. To set, I've been testing the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Face Powder. I'm using the shade Light 7 today. I like this powder. I don't love it. Again, I've also been working on using this in different ways as well with different foundations, different concealers, and I like this. I don't love it though but I feel like it does do a good job of kind of mattifying the face and smoothing out the pores and texture. Like it just did wonders for my T-zone where I applied it. I don't like it on its own. I've decided I definitely like it more so as a setting powder when I feel I want a little extra coverage. Sometimes it can look dry if you over apply it, but overall I do think it gives quite a smoothing finish. I like, you know, my Charlotte Tilbury airbrush powder better than this, but for the money, it really is not a bad product. So we're gonna pop back over and to my Florist's palette and I'm gonna get this raspberry shade on the tip of a brush and I'm gonna blend this all along the lower lash line just to finish up the look. And you see how that just makes everything come together. This is also gonna help with my under eyes not looking so crepey. So if you find with concealers that they're drying and they just make your under eyes not look good, blow out your lower lash line. That eyeshadow will cover that. <laughs> you can see on its own, since I don't have any other color, that it is more of a raspberry shade. So to deepen it up, I'm going into the shade next to that and I'm focusing this on the outer corner. The sun just came in, so I turned on the lights a little bit. And then I'm finishing off with the brown. I'm just popping it right in the outer corner of my lower lash line just to bring a little bit more definition. Very pretty. Pretty simple makeup look. I have a new product to try that I'm pretty excited about. I didn't have a new bronzer or a bronzer that I've been testing, uh, but I did find this. This is the Flower Beauty Heat Wave Bronzing and Essence. I suppose I probably should have tried this before I put down my foundation. I've never used this before, so I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> I'm going to use my Morphe M536. I've been using this a lot for like cream products. I'm gonna pour some of this on the back of my hand. Oh, this is a lot thicker than I envisioned it. I feel like this might need to be mixed. So let me shake this. Let me see if the consistency changes or anything. Okay, yeah. <laughs> One side is watery, the other side looks like, you know. I, I don't even know that I'm using this in the right way. This is just the only kind of new bronzy product that I had for today's video. So we'll just do that. And I'm going to put my Morphe brush in the back of my hand and I've spread it out along the brush. Let's see, so this is super duper warm. I actually don't think I'm gonna love that for today. I do have like powder and stuff down, so it might not love this. We'll see, you never know. That's the fun part with makeup and sometimes the not fun part. Okay, make sure we're blending this out. This is probably better for underpainting, which I never do, just not my style. Once it dries down, I do find that it's a little bit harder to blend. Actually though, that gave a prettier bronze than I was expecting. I just need to blend it a little better. Like right here, you see how it's kind of stuck. Once it dries, it's difficult to work with. Blush and bronzer are gonna make it look more seamless, but just be aware of that. I'm thinking I should've worked a little bit more in sections, right? But for a first time use, I'm actually not mad at this product. I feel like it looks pretty good. It didn't break up anything that I can notice that was underneath. I think I like this. I'm gonna have to continue playing with this. This was a first timer here. But this might be really fun for the summer. Flower, okay. Let's do some blush. I want to try this for blush. I pulled out actually different blushes to use, but I wanna use this for blush. So I'm actually gonna mix two different shades. This shade down here, because I like the undertone of it. It's a little rosy and neutral. And then I want to get a pop of the raspberry shade because I cannot help it. So let's see how this applies as blush. I feel like it's gonna create a really pretty cohesive look. You see, the reason that these aren't super powdery or anything are because they are able to work so well as blushes it's not overpowering on the cheek. I feel like it looks really pretty. Like this top pan is a little hard to get my brush into. But wow, you can actually build that up too. Well, I'm happy with that. I think this looks gorgeous. And I'm keeping it towards the back of my face just to keep everything in cohesion. That's gorgeous. Okay, let's do the other cheek. 
a little bit on the center of the nose. I might have gotten a little carried away. <laughs> I got excited and now it might be too much, but it looks super pretty on the cheek. Not mad at that, honestly, really not. Next time I won't be so excited though. It's okay, all you have to do is take a sponge that you use to apply foundation or concealer and kind of push it out, make it more natural. Okay, and then highlight. Didn't have any new highlights, but I knew exactly what I wanted to do. So I'm gonna mix the two highlight shades in here, which is gonna be the golden shade and the pinky shade. I feel like this is gonna bring even more cohesion. I'm gonna pop this right here. Not bad for all in one, I must say. Here's how everything is looking thus far. I think the look is super duper pretty, something I'm very comfortable wearing out. So I'm gonna quickly do some liner and lashes. I don't have anything really new to test out. I'm going to be testing the Hard Candy and Marilyn Monroe eyeliner that I tested recently. But the rest, like mascara and false lashes, I'm just gonna pop something on, so I'll be right back. Okay, lash glue is drying, but here's what we're looking like. I did a pretty everyday look for me. I have lashes in a box number 28, which is similar to Ardell Wispies. This is like everyday makeup for me, I love it. So let's move on to lips. ELF came out with lip liners semi-recently. These are the Love triangle lip filler lines and I've been trying to use these more. They're not my favorite pencil but I think they're good for the price. This is the shade soft pink and this is just a good color to lay down as a base before whatever you use as a lip color and I've been enjoying going right over my cupid's bow because I feel like when I fill that in it makes my lips look so much fuller. So these are catching me as a good affordable lip liner but honestly if you're looking for the best affordable lip liner i think nyx is still the best way to go i'm happy that elf has a lip liner now but it's not the best you know and of course i made a mess lip color i have a new formula from Florisys that I've actually never tried from them before. These are their Bloom Rouge Long Lasting Liquid Lipstick. I did not prep my lips, so it should be interesting. Let me show you the packaging that they come in. <laughs> so cute. As per usual, I expected. This is the packaging. Oh my goodness. So these are inspired by the unique silk watered gauze of China, a textile that undergoes a traditional dyeing technique that uses plant derived dyes to create lush colors. The formula is enriched with floral essences from peony, multiflora rose, and more to nourish your lips and give a long lasting finish. It's supposed to be lightweight, glide on smoothly, and form a film immediately, delivering a long lasting finish with highly saturated color. So good ingredients, apparently. Let me see the colors that I have. So this first one here is M410. So this one is gonna be more of a like red tone. That looks pretty. This looks pretty and it doesn't look like it's gonna be drying. It's not sinking into the lines of my hand. So M410, let's see what else we have. This one is M515. I think this one might be the color for today because I feel like it goes perfectly with my eye makeup. But that is M515. And then the last color that I have is M512. This one is a little bit warmer. This one is gonna be a beautiful fall color, right? How pretty, okay. Oh, I actually just read, if you are interested in these, they are a limited edition design inspired by the neck jewelry worn by the dye people. And the case combines with a set of decorative dye elements to celebrate exquisite, dynamic, and inspiring dye art. How cool, I didn't realize that. We are wearing M515 today because it goes perfect with my eyeshadow. Good pigment. Ooh, yeah, it feels like a soft matte cream kind of formulation. Really comfortable and lightweight. And I think you can blend it out with your fingers and that's gonna give you kind of that blotted lip look that's really popular as well. Pretty, and I love how this smoothed my lips. My lips were dry and it smoothed over. Okay, I like this formula. This is a super duper good formula. I might be like the most excited about these. I love this type of lip product. Okay, let me get my life together and I will be right back. So here's the final look that we are working with. You know, this isn't a super unique look. I've definitely done a ton of looks like this on my channel, but I really do love it. So the key pieces for today's look that I'm really excited about, this palette from Florisys, 
so beautiful. It's a different formulation than I'm used to working with with typical eyeshadows and I think it's really fun and versatile. I loved using the colors as blush and highlight as well to create a monochromatic look. So this was really fun. Also from Florisys, these lip products, this liquid lipstick, so good. I am so impressed by this. I love the packaging. I love the texture. Oh, no transfer. Feels like so lightweight on the lips. Okay, that's like amazing. <laughs> um, I'm excited to play with this Flower Heat Wave Bronzing Essence. I definitely think I need to play with it some more. It does dry down like to a powder finish. Can be hard to blend, but it has potential. So this is a newbie that I'm excited about as well as this Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Perfector. Definitely need to play with this. Not sure if I love it yet, but I think I like it. I think those were like the newest, most exciting products that I played with today. So thank you so much for hanging out with me, testing new makeup, letting me just do my thing. And again, a huge thank you to Florisys for sponsoring today's video. I will have the link down below in the description box to check everything out from Florisys. Some of the most beautiful makeup you will ever see, I promise you. With that being said, thank you so much for being subscribed to my channel and liking this video. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one.